Hi there, I'm Cindy Sidwell, and I am the Director of Judges for the Utah Debate Coaches Association. And here are a few instructions on how to judge speech events. So thank you so much for tuning in and for finding out how to do this because you're doing an incredible service for our kids. All right, here we go. Okay, so first and foremost, thank you so much for judging. A lot of our judges really do feel like they're not experienced enough to judge at high school debate and at speech events, but most of our judges are people just like you who have no experience judging. And without you, we wouldn't have near enough judges to actually run these debate tournaments, which are so beneficial to our kids. So first and foremost, thank you if we forget to thank you because it gets kind of crazy. All right. Um, your main goal today is that you will be filling out the ballot and determining the, win the top winner and then ranking kids down. So before each round, ballots are going to be handed out for you to fill out. And if it's like a Friday night, usually do, they do like three rounds and you'll probably end up getting ballots for each of those rounds. Now, many of these ballots actually have rubrics, rubrics on you to help you judge. So do take a look at these. Um, just make sure that you are being kind to the kids, all right? Once you're given a ballot, you're going to look for the room number to see where you'll be judging. You're going to take the ballot, which is actually a group of ballots all stapled together, a pen or a pencil, and a timer or your phone that has a timer on it to the room. Now, students will probably be waiting for you when you come. They're not allowed to enter a room without you, so please alert the tournament if they are already in the room as this is a major rule violation. Uh, our contestants aren't allowed to go inside without a judge just so that we can keep our room secure. All right, next, you're going to look at your ballot or a cover sheet with the contestants' names and codes, and you're going to call them out to see if all the contest contestants are in the room. And that's kind of important just to see when you're going to get started. Now, some students may not be there as they may be double entered. So this means that they're actually entered in another event as well. And they may be going to that event first and then come in near the end. Sometimes the contestants will actually show up and say, I'm double entered. Do you mind if I go first? So even though there is an order, you can break that order when someone is double entered because they really do need to get to the next round so that we can get all of our kids through and they can go to all of their events. Next, you call up each contestant in the order on the ballot. Now, if someone says they're double entered, like I said, please let them go first and they'll run to their next round. On each ballot, you're going to find a place for your name, the school you represent, the contestant's name, code, etc. Just fill in the blanks. And one thing I would recommend, if there are just codes, to also ask the kids' names. Every once in a while, you might get a little number wrong or the code might be a little wrong. Uh, so it's really important that we know who that is and putting the contestant's name on the ballot will help us figure those out just in case. All right, so now you get to listen to these speeches and you can fill out the ballot as you go. Make sure the name and code are correct on the ballot before they start speaking. So when I call someone up, I say, now you are this person and this is your code. Is that correct? Cool. All right. Whatever speech event you're judging, make sure you you take a timer and you're willing to do time signals for our kids. Now, time signals are when you hold up how much time they have left. So, for instance, if they're giving um, a speech and it's 10 minutes long and they say, please start giving me time signals at five minutes, then I would hold up five and then at four minutes, hold up four and then three, two, one. This means 30 seconds. It's like a pirate hook. And then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, like that, okay? Usually there's a 15-second grace period when you finish, but then you've, you've got to kind of cut them off. So that's why time signals are really important because they could keep talking and they don't want to 
get themselves disqualified by going way over time. So make sure you give time signals. Sometimes other contestants are in the room and uh, you could ask them to do time signals for you if you would like, since you are also dealing with the ballots. So for most events, this does work out where other contestants are happy to help you judge. Um, if the kids want to time themselves, I'm good with that. I probably would still you know, set the time at the same just to kind of keep an eye out how much time they used. So uh, just make sure you do do time signals. Um, some of our kids are doing spur of the moment speeches and they want to use all of their time. And like I said, they will keep speaking. All right. As you listen to each speaker, take notes on the ballot. Contestants will see this ballot. And what they're mainly looking for is what did they do well? Please compliment them. And how can they improve? Please be really kind. Um, some of our debaters, like right now, I have kids going to their very first tournaments. Some of them aren't great yet. They're going to end up being awesome as long as you encourage them. If all you have is negative and you're just nitpicking every little thing for these kids, they may quit thinking there's no way that they can get over all of these hurdles. So I even had a kid once who gave like a 30 second impromptu speech, which you'll find out about impromptu. And I tried to do a compliment sandwich. I tried to do more compliments than I do like the negatives. Um, and the critiques. So I said, way to get up there. That was super brave. And I really liked where you were going with this topic. Maybe add another story with it because I thought your analysis was really interesting. Um, maybe add some stories to make it longer uh, and maybe work on not pacing, but holding still and just moving now and again to add to the speech, all right? So just think if this was your kid, they would want some cool critiques, but they would also want some nice things. So as I put on this little PowerPoint, you don't have to write a novel about them. Uh, just jot down a few thoughts. Please be nice. Um, what happens sometimes is we have judges who are taking notes on a separate sheet of paper, uh, and then they go back to the judge room. They can't turn in their ballots fast because now they have to transcribe everything over. So my ballots don't look super pretty, but it gets the job done where I take some notes on like the right side on the speech itself. And then I just write some quick comments as I'm seeing them. OK, so don't worry. Don't be a perfectionist and you don't have to have a novel of things to say to them. But please do give them some comments on there, e um, even if the even if the tournament allows you to do oral critiques, it's really important for the coaches to see what judges see. And it helps us a lot when we're coaching them. All right. So again, fill it out as you go. The faster you get done filling out these ballots, the faster we all go home. And that's why it's so imperative that you do that. After each speaker, what I do is I ask myself, were they better than the other speakers? So I compare the first one to the second one. The second one was better, I put that ballot on top, and then I keep comparing them and moving those ballots around because at the very end of the round, you're gonna end up ranking them first place, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, and on down. Uh, so first would be the very best speaker. So by the end of the round, if I've done this, they're already in order. All I have to do is do one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Uh, I used to not do this and it would take me much longer to fill out the ballots because I had to figure out and try and remember whose speech was whose. It also helps me to write on the ballot a few things that help me remember them, like story about mom, the cashier or something like that. All right. I hope that that helped. Uh, some of the ballots have not only the rank, but they have something called a rate. At this, what they're asking for is for you to put S for superior, E for excellent, G for good, and F for fair. Okay. All right. Uh, and what I usually say is please don't use fair. Uh, I resist using the rate of fair because I want to encourage student, students, not discourage them. If they were all amazing, like in a final round, you can give them all superior. That's awesome. You have to have only one 
one, one, two, one, three, one, four, like that, but you can tie on the rate, okay? So sign the ballots and you are ready to go. So in general, if I'm, you know, filling them out as I go, I only need a couple more minutes to put the rank and the rate and off we go. So again, be kind. Don't use fair if possible. Don't just give everyone superior either. Um, but at the same time, the, these kids are working hard. All right. So here are the speech events that kids can um, participate in. So first, oratory, uh, foreign or U.S. extemp, impromptu. There are the interp events, humorous interp, dramatic interp, and duo. Informative and poi, or prose oral interpretation. Some tournaments may have more events than these, so just ask them for clarification as to what those rules are. So let's just go through these speech events real quick. Okay, the oratory. The oratory is a speech event where competitors write their own persuasive type speech. So I like to tell judges, it's a lot like writing their own TED Talk. So this speech can have up to 10% of other people's words, but it's mainly the competitors writing. If, if you feel like they have like way too much of other stuff. I mean, you can ask the coach about it. In general, the kids know this and you don't have to worry about that part of it. This speech is seven to 10 minutes long. Competitors should have a topic they feel strongly about. Now, one thing I would caution you as a judge is because they're taking a side and they're trying to be persuasive, if you disagree with them, if your set of morals is different from their set of morals, whatever it is, please put that aside and judge them on their speaking ability and the quality of the writing within the oratory. So please have an open mind with these. Um, I actually had a judge once like yell at one of my kids because they didn't agree with their topic and they thought they took the wrong side. So please don't do that, right? Let's not punish these kids for trying to take a stand on something they feel strongly about. By the end of oratory, speakers will usually have a call to action. They will have excellent delivery and hopefully make you think they probably did some research. There may be some statistics. Our kids are just brilliant. And for me, I am always very inspired when I watch these oratories. So have a good time with these oratories. All right, next, extemp speaking. We call it extemp. So extemp speakers are going to speak on questions given to them on current topics in the United States or the world. Now, before they came to the tournament, they did a bunch of research. They uploaded it to a Dropbox or something so that they could be offline. They actually don't do research online during this time period. They had to do the research beforehand and they don't know what the questions are gonna be. But a great extemp speaker will use many sources and dates in their speech to back up their analysis. If a speaker you find doesn't have any sources at all, they should not be ranked very high since it's important that they have demonstrated their research and that they are backed up by, by those sources. For me as a judge, I keep track of sources by directly writing them on the corner of the ballot just to take notes for myself. Unlike the other events uh, that you have with oratory and these other speech events where everyone comes in, extem speakers are preparing their speech in another room. They have 30 minutes to prepare, to research and write this up to seven minute speech, uh, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. So they look over their research, they write their speech, they practice on the way, and then they'll be coming in one at a time, seven minutes apart, because their speeches can last up to seven minutes long. All right. So usually, you know, the best speakers that are competitive will speak usually between five and a half to seven minutes long. And you can take that into account on the ballot when you're deciding. If someone gets up and gives a great three minute speech and someone else gets up and gives a pretty good seven minute speech. You can tell the other one has a little more material, right? But also ask yourself, did they use sources in those dates? Uh, next, please, this is also super important. Please give them time signals so that they know when to stop. Uh, if you don't do time signals, they will keep talking and wondering how much time they used. So very, very vital that you do that, which for me as a judge is kind of nice because I'm writing on the ballot 
um, and looking down. You're the only one in the room. So sometimes they're just looking right at you, giving their speech. Uh, for me, that kind of breaks eye contact for a second to look down. And they're welcome to time themselves if you want them to time themselves too. So again, remember, if you disagree with them politically or and, and you land on the opposite side, again, please don't like yell at them or rank them down for not picking the side that you believe in. Okay, so this is really cool that they are presenting this. Just please don't rank them down if you don't agree with them, especially with politics the way it is nowadays where we totally disagree with each other. Um, we want our kids to know that they can discuss these things with us. And even if we don't agree, we can be amazed at their speaking ability and the research that they did. So please be kind, judge on the depth of the analysis. All right, next up, impromptu speaking. Now, impromptu speakers are going to be creating their speeches right in front of you. You'll be given a list of topics for them to use. These are usually stapled onto the ballots and you will have access to those. These may be abstract words, quotes, people, or social issues. I've also seen uh, cartoons, uh, which is rare, but hey, you know, you never know, whatever the tournament wants to run. When the round begins, you are going to call up the first speaker and hand them the first bunch of topics. Sometimes these are just on one piece of paper, so you have to kind of rip them apart. So do your best to do that because you're going to be actually handing them, physically handing them those topics. Uh, they will have three topics to choose from on there. Um, let's see, as soon as the speaker looks at them, so they look down at them, Start the timer at seven minutes counting down. So again, time signals are incredibly important here. You're welcome to ask someone in the room to do this for you, but if you do it yourself, uh, what I do is I tell them when they've used 30 seconds, one minute, a minute 30, two minutes, two and a half, three, etc. And I do that out loud because they are busy writing down some ideas. Now, we don't want speakers to bring up this paper or even look at this paper. And if someone does bring up the paper, then they shouldn't be ranked ahead of someone who does not bring up the paper, right? So they're welcome to write this on a separate sheet of paper to get some notes down and, and get their thoughts in order. But again, don't rank someone who brings up a paper ahead of someone who does not. Uh, the speaker is going to pick one of these. They're, they're getting all ready. They usually get up after two minutes prep time, maybe three minutes prep time. Just don't stop the timer. You're going to keep going. Only now your time signals will be this way, right? And not verbal. You don't want to be yelling those out. That's really awkward. Um, all right. Speakers will then be judged on their delivery their analysis of the topic, their organization, et cetera. But you can also take into account how much prep time they used, which is actually very important. If one kid uses two minutes prep time and gives a really good speech, and someone uses three minutes prep time, three minutes is a whole minute longer than the two minute one, right? Are you gonna reward the two minute time, you know, the two minute prep time, and they spoke for five minutes above the three minute prep time with four minutes to speak. So you can see using prep time uh, is very, they, they think about how they're going to do that. So the less prep time they use, you know, a little bit the better. It doesn't mean if someone uses one minute that they should always be in, in the lead. But at one of these at a tournament last year, I had a judge who a kid used five minutes prep time, which was just crazy, and then spoke for two minutes and they gave them the first in the round, which shouldn't have happened. That's kind of, that's a little outrageous, okay? So you can balance that out. Do your best to look at their delivery, their analysis, and then how they use their prep time. All right, the interp events. So interps are drama or comedy pieces that are performed without the use of props, costumes, etc. Actors may play many roles or they may just play one. It's kind of up to them. They choose their own pieces. The contestants are judged on how well they can do the characters and create the spellbinding scene. They have five to ten minutes to present their piece. Uh, and you can even ask the tournament if there is a minimum amount of time, but usually five minutes is about minimum. Dramatic interp, or we also call it DI, 
are pieces that are usually serious. They may have some funny elements in it, but overall they're pretty serious. Humorous and Terps or HI are pieces that are supposed to be funny and we hope that they are funny. Uh, duo has two people performing. Now the weird thing about Duo is they're not allowed to look at each other. They're not allowed to touch each other. And so they have to get kind of creative as to how they're going to go about doing this. It can be funny. It can be serious. It can be both. It could be whatever they want it to be. Um, and again, are they doing great characters and voices and all that? So yeah, then you rank them. All right. Informative speaking is relatively new event, but it's being pushed a little more since the NSDA has come out with it. Informative speaking is a 10 minute presentation written and performed by the student. Informative requires students to balance that content with delivery and style. Students in informative must be articulate, engaging and smooth with their delivery at both vocal and physical level. The purpose is to inform and educate the audience of a topic of significance. Um, they may actually use visual aids in their performance. So oratory, they never use visual aids. They shouldn't use visual aids. Informative, they are allowed to. They don't have to, but they're allowed to. So research is really important in, in informative. All claims should be backed up with evidence that verifies the information the speakers conveying. So three ways you're going to evaluate. First, relevance. Um, look at, is this a relevant topic that they're, that they're talking about? Is it timely? Second, relatable. Uh, relatability is how the speaker connects the audience to the topic. Does it help you to really understand it and connect that? And third, originality. When evaluating, it's important to know that there are, there are just, a, there are a few very original ideas, so don't mark them down. But, you know, how inventive are they getting with this topic so that you are learning something new, we hope. Program oral interpretation, which we also call POI. Uh, program oral interp is a 10 minute performance that can include a combination of prose and poetry and drama. Uh, they have to have at least two out of the three genres that I just said though. So prose, poetry, or drama. They actually have to have a manuscript in their hand. That's part of the rules. So that would be one of the only speaking events where they bring a manuscript up and they must have it in their hand. There are three key areas of POI. First, piecing all of the different types of literature into one cool, cohesive performance. So it should be a really nice, compelling performance centered around a theme or an idea. Second, blocking or the movements that they, that they make to convey space, emotion, and action. Blocking should enhance the performance, not distract from the story. In POI, the student's allowed to use the manuscript as a prop to enhance blocking if they want to do that, as long as they still hang on to the manuscript at all times. And then third, characterization, which is the thing we're also looking at in the regular interps. It reveals the personality of the character through how they deliver lines and that sort of thing. Thing. Okay, so hopefully it is beautifully done. It's a, a fun addition to the speech events. All right, and that's it. So you rock for listening to this. And um, this PowerPoint, I'm going to make it available to all of the coaches as well. If you just want to have this PowerPoint, just make sure to fill out the ballots as quickly as you can to return them to the ballot table. And you are a mentor as much as a judge. So remember, kindness comes first. Encourage our students. They're gaining really valuable skills for life. So we don't want them to quit over what a judge has said. We want you want to be the kind of judge that they go. This judge said this about me, and I am going to remember that for the rest of my life. Every debater or speaker remembers a kind ballot that was really, really complimentary of them, and every debater or speaker remembers a mean ballot where the judge was like very awful. So be the kind judge, enjoy their brilliance. Uh, you will suddenly have a lot of faith and hope in our future because these kids are brilliant. So again, thank you for listening. You rock. The end.